thanks a lot for joining the session. We're very happy to host you. Myself, Vahid. I have Jerry, who was actually a student a couple of years ago. He did a working student program. Then he joined um, as a full-time a trainee program, business transformation trainee program. And now actually he joined since the beginning of this year, my team. So I thought we'll do that together. So he, I tell you the, the corporate truth and he can tell you really the, what's really going on as a student and the tips and tricks. And we have Catherine who's here from the recruitment side. So she can help us a little bit more on the questions, more technical, if you would have. We're opening, uh, Paul, because I'm really curious to see where you are what you're doing right now and uh, what you would like me to talk about. So first of all, I know this is Dach, so I'd be super keen to understand where you are based. Also, I wanna understand which stage of your education you're in right now. Is it secondary, high school, gymnasium, realschule? I mean, each of the countries have a different setup um, or if you're already working and you're interested to hear more what you could have done maybe 10 years ago to join SAP. And also, what are you interested about? Is it really an internship that you're looking for? Do you have one job in mind and you're, you have studied something very specific and you want absolutely that job? Or are you kind of curious trying to figure this one out? And of course, the last question is, do you want slides? I'm a corporate uh, strategy person. So I was in the, the corporate strategy team for five years. I was in Boston consulting. so. I love slides, but we can also have a very easy coffee chat. I know that all of you are studying from home the last two years, so you've been Zoomed out eight hours of lectures a day with the professors. So I'm also happy to stop the slide and go to the dirty stuff and the, the secret stuff that Jerry can tell you all of the truth of what's happening and how you get a job. So we're looking at the poll. I see there is... Good answers, I give you one or two more minutes. Myself, I grew up in Geneva in Switzerland. So I don't see anyone from Switzerland here. I'm seeing Austria, probably around 15, 20% and Germany around uh, 70%. So where are my Swiss people? Where are my French speaking Swiss people? What's going on? I'm a bit disappointed here. Maybe I need to do another session with them. So um, I grew up in Geneva. I actually continued my life in, uh, in Lausanne. I went to this uh, engineering school in Lausanne, then in the south of France. Then I continued in Princeton for my master's thesis with Siemens. And uh, after this, this was Switzerland, grew up in Switzerland, then worked for Shell, worked for Shell out of London. I was doing business transformation programs. After London, we moved to Asia, to Singapore. So this was kind of my second life. We did Singapore, um, and there I joined Boston Consulting Group. So in strategy, I was doing strategy and transformation projects in Asia. And um, I married a German, and that's how we're back here with the two kids. And now I'm in Waldorf, so below Heidelberg. So we are. I'm here with my two kids, and uh, they switched from Singapore where they grew up. Both of them were born there, and then they moved to Germany. So I think, Jerry, it's time to close the polls and to see if we actually have any Swiss people in this call. Can we share the results? So now you can see the results. Hopefully you can see the results is that 15% from Austria, 71% from Germany, 15% others. I'll be curious where you're from. Just put it into the chat box. I'd love to know. Then we have most of you are majority of masters and PhD, bachelors and secondary. Look, I think the earlier you start engaging in to know, the better it's going to be for you for your career. So high school students, that's awesome. Come in, do some internship. And uh, I think bachelors and masters, probably it's a stressful times when you need to find a job. Probably where am I going to be next year? I don't want to be sitting at home with my parents and asking for pocket money from my grandmother. So let me get a job. Let me start get paid. And I think generally exploring and internships. Oh my God. We have a lot of coffee chat. I thought most of you are going for the standard pitch, so I'm a bit disappointed I had all of my slides. Um, there is always three groups of people in these sessions. First, people that are just curious, a bit of tourists, just show up what's going on. Am I going to get some goodies? Then there's hostages. 
hostages, their parents, their girlfriends, boyfriends are telling them, okay, you need to get a job. This is enough. Just go there. Please attend the session. Make sure that you attend the things and take some notes and email the people. And the third category is the true learners. So for those who are tourists, I hope I give you a bit of entertainment. So I'll talk about Leo Messi, Brad Pitt and sneakers. For those who are really the passionate true seekers, then I'll give you the, the corp a bit of the corporate pitch also. And for those who are hostages, at least I'll give you some uh, top three secrets to get a job. So everybody will be happy, hopefully, by the end of the session. So to get started, I thought that um, I talk about sports, then some people want to know about sports. I did a very interesting session at INSEAD. INSEAD is this business school that's in Paris in Singapore, where one of the professors was telling me about the secrets to winningness. What does it take to win in a sports team? What are the key characteristics? And let me go to the next slide. Can anyone recognize where this picture comes from? Which movie is this? And if you know, you can just type it into the chat. If you feel shy, just send me a private message. And Moneyball, Varun. Okay, perfect. Please, Jerry, take the name Varun. You get a price. I'll send you a nice book. Moneyball, absolutely. This is Moneyball. I took the German screenshots because I think the German audience appreciates and can go directly on this. Moneyball, this is about the science of data and analytics about to, to get better uh, performing teams. Actually, it's not all about analytics and big data and machine learnings. I think the best, most basic thing is the practice of set plays. Having a number of set plays that as a team, you know, it's the power of simulation. What's the configuration? If this happens, how do we react? It is boring. It is terrible. 95% of it is when it's cold, freezing, raining, and only 5% is the game, right? Is when you're in game situation. But the first one was the practice of set plays the consistency of practicing. Number two, secret of winningness is you have a tendency to decelerate when you're reaching the goal. You have good grades, everything looks good, the exam looks good, but then when it comes to the very, very last moment, you're very really tired. Usain Bolt, they said that he was one of the best, uh, one of the best athletes, not because he was faster, because, because he decelerated slower. So he pushed himself to the maximum, and at the very, very last moment, he stopped. Even sometimes, his acceleration came at the very, very end. So tendency to decelerate. And the third one is actually the ability to learn, so learning velocity. So by the way, I think all of you have learning velocity because you do four or five hours of session to learn about SAP on top of your studies. So you probably already have all of these. But learning velocity, one of the best examples for me was this unfortunate, crazy corona crisis. You remember the first patients that arrived in the US or the first people who were sick in the US? If you know the CDC in the US, right? The Center for Disease Control, when you have all of these crazy movies about it, virus comes to America, people with masks and gloves go around. CDC said, we are the only ones that can do testing. Nobody else can test. So it was crazy in the US, it took weeks and weeks to get tested. It was extremely expensive. So this was kind of the very centralized approach of executing things. And I think that's where people didn't really know who was infected or not. Then very quickly, the US switched in terms of the vaccine production. So the testing was very centralized. Vaccine production, I mean, as you all know, fully decentralized. We open it up. Moderna, you can go BioNTech, you can go CureVac, you can go COVAX. So every single company is able to do it. So this is kind of the decentralized approach. And we know that in learning and in team performance, decentralized approach increases the speed of learning. And that's really critical. So predictors of willingness, practice of set plays, not decelerating, and learning. And the learning part was always very important for me. I always thought that to be successful in corporate, you need to know. You, I need to be super prepared. I need to have it in my studies. And in the session, the previous session also, Sebastian was mentioning, right? You don't, the world is changing so fast that the skills that you have when you study are going to change very quickly. The best example for me was in SAP, some of our very, very senior members. So it's kind of our executive committee, the board members. I was supporting one of the, the, the board members when she took her job. 
the first thing she did, she actually went to the other board member, our CFO, Luka Mucic, you can search him. She asked him, hey, Luka, I actually have no clue about how to do financials, talk to investors. I've been doing sales all my life. Can I shadow you for one week? And when I saw that, that, wow, probably from the most senior ranks in SAP, admit, hey, I don't really know. I want to actually sit behind you and shadow you. And that's a practice I learned that every quarter I'm trying to do that. One week, sit within a team that I really have no clue about. And that's the beauty at SAP because you're allowed to have this time for learning and training. So last quarter, I was with the cloud platform development teams. I was doing cloud platform architecture reviews. Two quarters ago, I was with the German sales teams doing forecasting. And my next quarter, I'm thinking about the supply chain. But this being a sponge is so much more important than knowing the things. And um, for me, this is something that I had from the childhood, kind of this, and I call it the posture of learning. I had this posture of learning when I finished my high school and I wanted to save the world. And, you know, I was a white kid, grew up in Switzerland, felt very privileged. I need to give back. So what do I do? I went to Africa. I went to Africa, to the villages, to help with medical healthcare projects, sitting under the mango tree. And if you haven't done that, this is the best thing in life. You're chilled, mangoes fall, you just eat. So the rhythm of life goes very different. But I took this year to go to Africa. And I said, oh, I want to be a medical doctor. I want to help people that don't have healthcare and this. And the interesting part was that in Brazzaville, so this was in French speaking Congo, people would go to the hospital and would get injections in their hands of glucose. What is glucose? Glucose is sugar. But the fact was that the doctor would get paid when there's people that come to the hospital. And because the doctor didn't have the right salary, essentially he had to do this kind of fake patients in order to get his re revenue. When a nurse would leave the hospital, essentially, instead of replacing her, they would get a ghost salary. They would keep her salary and somebody else would do. And I thought to myself, man, it's not doctors that the world needs. Of course you need doctors. I mean, Africa, Asia, any, there is doctors, there's great medical healthcare. What the world needs is information. And this was 1997. This was, you know, before we had iPhones, we had kind of the very old Nokia, the long flip phones, or we had the razor that we opened. And I thought, wow, if the people were able to have access to this education, right? This was the beginning of the internet, 1997, 98. And that's what I thought. One line of code can change the world. Data and information. It's not about being a medical doctor to save patients and you know pump the hearts and do some heroics. And that's what kind of made me think about IT technology, it was the beginning of the internet at that time. And this was where I decided, hey, I'm going to go study media and communications at the engineering school. And my parents had told me, if you go to Africa, we don't want you to just stay and go around and bum around. You need to register for your studies before. So I had registered for the engineering school in Lausanne. I came back. And I, didn't, I didn't know that it was all the first two years, physics, mathematics, statistics, I hated it. It was so tough. And I, and I'm, my heart goes for all of you. Studying when you're at home, I mean, you're supposed to be partying in your vege. You're supposed to go out, meet people, discover things. And being in the basement at home for the last two years, I had this song. It's a gospel song. Hold on just a little while longer. Fight on just a little while longer. Everything will be all right. The rainy days, right? like today, when it's cold, you're in your basement, you're studying. I know it's super tough. It's more, it's tougher to study and to look for a job than have a job. And this was, my studies were actually not happy. I was really not happy. It was nice, but it was so difficult. And I was kind of really looking for an escape. And that's how I ended up taking my first job at Shell. I wanted an escape, some international job. And at Shell, I took a an interesting job in oil and gas. I was doing a business transformation for back offices. I was traveling around Europe. I really wanted something that gets me out of my comfort zone. So I would travel to Greece. I traveled for one year to the Netherlands, to the UK. But then one of the big decisions that I had was, this is really not my place. I love this company. Shell is a really beautiful, very smart, very intellectual. I call it a type of people 
intellectually and B type of attitude, not arrogant, very collegiate, but it was just not the environment. And maybe that's one of the things that I want to say for today. One of the things that stayed in my mind is you are the average of the five people who are around you. Are these the people that inspire you, that make you grow, that want to do something different? And I thought, that's not what I want. Life is long, you know. Your first choice that you make after university of a job is not what defines you. You have multiple opportunities to change. And that's what I did after five years there. I just didn't see it. And I left. And that's what I want to say, that you don't know the red thread of your career until you're in it and you look back and you say, hey, wow, it made sense that I went to Africa. I learned about telecom and internet. Then it made sense that I went to Shell. Because guess what I was doing at Shell in my last years? SAP programs. That's how, how, how I, I got into the universe of SAP. And then 10 years later, I joined SAP. So I think it's really difficult as a student now in these rainy days, in the basement, not seeing the professors, not seeing the students. And I just want to say, the future, when they ask you about what's happening in 20 years, what is happening in five years, nobody knows. What they only want to know from you when you apply is that you have the passion for that. Um, what's my diff difference between my first job and SAP and this? I think it, I changed. I was feeling more confident that in the, in the first job that I had after university, I felt I really had to conform to what the people around were there. I really, really felt that it wasn't me. So it was not really the job. It was even maybe myself, right? Everybody was so senior and experienced. And Shell in the oil and gas industry in 2000, they hadn't really hired any young people. And I was kind of the first batch. So there was really no peers. There was really a lot of very senior gray-haired people that had oil under their nails. They had been working in the industry for a very long time. And I just felt very small. So maybe that's also... What's the environment you want to be? Do you want to hang out with these people? The, the second job was Boston Consulting in strategy consulting. So I did the MBA in between. I was not happy. And doing an MBA, a very expensive decision. You were gonna, never going to make up the ROI. So for those who are thinking of MBA, but from a human perspective, probably the best thing and the best friends that I met there during my master's. So now I want to ask you, some people want sports, so we have to cover sports also in the next minutes that we have. Difference between basketball and football. Leo Messi was just appointed now um, one of the Ballon d'Or, right? One of the best players. And this links to my Boston Consulting times in strategy consulting. You know, these are these jobs like McKinsey or BCG where you work nonstop, 9 a.m., 9 p.m., six days a week. The difference is that in basketball, we call it the concept of the, the, the strong link. In football, it's a concept that's called weak link. What's a weak link system? A weak link system is that essentially, if there's one weak link in a football game, somebody scores a goal, there's a bad pass, you lose. Basketball is a strong link system. Essentially, there is a lot of action, the lot of movement. And in basketball, for instance, if you want to improve your team, you get a really strong player. This guy on the left, LeBron James. He can go shoot, he can come back and defend, he go shoot and defend. Fast-paced, exactly, very, it's fast-paced. The world of, of uh, strategy consulting and the enterprise is actually a weak link system. It's essentially the ability to play as a team is more critical than to be a superhero. In the past, people wanted to have really cowboy, someone who can code, someone who's the guru in machine learning and this, but your ability to work in a team, to resolve as a team, is what people look now when they do an assessment center. And I, I felt that I had not learned that at school because in Europe, you do much less than that. And I know in Asia and the US, they did much more. So that's really what I learned in Boston Consulting, the power of the team. And Essentially, that was my five, next five years. And the same thing happened, by the way. After five years, I was like, ah, oh, maybe that's not where I should be. Maybe I'm not going to grow here. And uh, I know that Maximilian is going to ask me what's, what happened there. I would say it's also some, what some people call imposter syndrome. You know, you make it somewhere and you believe, hey, you make it till you fake it. And somehow I felt I was faking it. And also strategy consulting. I'm not sure if you know about 
probably had interest in McKinsey BCG. I mean, it, you work nonstop. So I had one child at the time and a second child. And uh, my wife sat me down. I was flying out Sunday nights, coming back on Friday nights to at home for this. So it was crazy. It was amazing from a job perspective, but really crazy. And um, they said, Bahid, you're either my partner or a BCG partner because this marriage is not going to go further. So this was a big kind of slowdown. And that's where kind of the SAP opportunity came. Wow, a company which has the, the type of people I want to work with that doesn't have the crazy lifestyle. And uh, that is really changing the world. And back to my love around one line of code can change the world. And um, that's how kind of the SAP, which I would say the third part of my career started. And the reason why I say this to you, because you, the choices that you're making right now, it feels very heavy. What's my first job? What's this? No, it's not. Nobody knows what they want to do. They make choices. They do internships. They enter into the market. And that's how you discover. So don't let anyone ask you what you want to do in five years disturb you. Just pick an answer. Be passionate about it. That's what we look for. Now I go to the three secrets. The first things that I, if I think about my career choices, and especially SAP, one was reaching out, talking to people that are, I did, I explored 45 companies before finding SAP when I was in Singapore. So it's not going to come just like this. You need to talk to people. You need to reach out. You need to harass people. Then the second part was really, how do I get myself inside the company rather than waiting from the outside? So internship, working students, projects, anything inside. And that's how I got more into contact with what's the reality of SAP. And the third one is, and that's, I think, maybe to a question of why I quit, quit jobs, why I stayed, is because the moment you can really feel that you are not kind of your work person, you have to put the mask when you come in and then you're in and out. And to be honest, maybe it has to do a lot with me, with my maturity and my and what was happening in the rest of my life. So it's not universal, but I would say we want you as, a, as who you really are. And it's not just me. I asked um, five of the people that we have hired, six of the people. So that's really the examples. And I would give them to you as examples to reach out, take their names, connect with them. I already told them they're waiting for your emails. So this is not just what I'm talking uh, kind of a theory. It's really how it happens. All six of them, and I've seen from your names that you're from all around the world as well. It's a coincidence that all of them are master students, by the way. Master, being a master student is not the, the requirement for SAP. You can be a PhD, you can be a bachelor, you can come directly from high school. Our CEO is not a master student. Our CEO had a very interesting path. You can check him out, Christian Klein, and he made it and he's extremely successful. But I would say, What's interesting is Regina, she just started in HR with a limited contract, not even a working student. And all of them applied via the website. That was interesting for me. You know, sometimes you think, oh, you need to have connections. You need to know someone. The websites don't work. The websites will work. If you have a, if you put some time in your, in your application letter, if you put some time in your GitHub, in your LinkedIn, in your portfolio, the first thing that we'll do is Google you, right? So if I find a nice LinkedIn web page with some comments, some, 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 some talking points, a picture, something that's professional, people will reach out to you. So, you know, like I, 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 that's how I got my job at Shell, by the way, the first job. I applied online. I didn't know anyone in Shell. So I would say, your home, apply online. Don't, don't think that it's going to go into a garbage. At least for SAP, it's very serious. That's how we get candidates and that's how we want to make sure that we can access all kinds of candidates be they from mexico from vietnam from brazil and also from germany austria and switzerland so the thing is apply on the website and the second thing is all of them started not as a full-time employees anna she was telling me she studied uh, healthcare science in ludwigshafen she wanted to start to continue in the healthcare business and she's heard in a lecture that SAP is doing something in healthcare. So actually, she asked her mom to connect her to all of the people that they know in SAP. She told me, 
And all of them somehow ended up with the head of healthcare of SAP that said, oh my God, I'm receiving five connections about this young girl, I need to talk to her. There was no internship in healthcare. She convinced him to create an internship for him. And to be honest, in SAP, it's very easy for us to create internship or working student positions once we see there is a fit. So don't hesitate, find a manager, reach out to them, show what you are really able to do and what you bring in. And this was for Anna, this was actually interesting. She told me it was in 2015, she started her studies. It was her mandatory internship she did. So this was in 2017, she did a summer internship for uh, eight weeks. Then it was a fit from both sides, continued as a working student for two years. And then she became a solution associate for healthcare. So now she's actually defining the future of healthcare, the BioNTech, Moderna, and co working with them. So that's kind of the trend that I was seeing. And these are six people that are in my team. I know them. So I'm telling you, if you do the three advices, reaching out, mom's friends, your friends, or even if you don't have anyone that you know, take these six names, do a screenshot, email them. You have no more excuses now. If they don't respond to you, email me and I'll make sure they respond. But we're really happy to talk to you. The second one was really to get in, find the way to get in internships, summer internships, because also it's there that you find out, are these the type of people that uh, you want to be with or not? Are these the people you want to hang out with? And the third one is show up. Nobody really actually cares about which school you were, really. Nowadays, it's about what you're doing. What's again in your GitHub repository? What's on your LinkedIn? What's in your social? What's on your Medium account? Which is awesome because in the past, some people could not get into the best schools. But now I think there is a big equality of chances. So this was a bit of a, I thought I wanted to, to, to show you that life is not linear, that you make mistakes, you change your choices. But if you have the passion, when I go in an interview, what I want to hear from you is, I love SAP, I love machine learning, or I love RPA, that's what I want to do. Even if in your mind you have, you're still thinking, hey, consulting, medical doctor, healthcare. I think we want to feel the passion. And when we feel the passion, we'd love to get you in so that you can test each other. On that, I hope it's actually useful for you. I thought it's a bit a different format than the other. So just send me um, the comments. Thank you, Maximilian. Um, and feel free to reach out to me. And I want to have a special offer for you. I actually want, I'm starting a book club next year. And I'm starting with six books. The first book is from Bill Gates, How to Avoid the Climate Disaster. The format's gonna be one book a month. And we do one hour of group discussion the first Monday of the month at 5 p.m. And the next five books is the five books that uh, Bill Gates has recommended. So he always gives a Christmas list. So we're gonna do January, Kazuo Ishiguro, February, Hamnet, March, April, May. And then the last five books of the year, I want you to recommend. So email me what books you want to do in the book club, and I'd, I'd love to have you in this book club. This is going to be like 12, 15 people. There's no job, by the way. It's just that I thought that I want to hear from you what inspires you. What is it that we should be doing more at SAP? So hopefully that was something useful for you. Um, the, the slide, oh, somebody says the slide about the interns, I'll show back. So this is my email, by the way. So feel free to email me if you want to join the book club, but you don't have to. If, if you don't have enough time, email these people that's more interested because you have a job and it will pay you. The book club, you have to pay yourself for the books. I'm not paying for anything. You'll just have the chance to network. Anyway, thanks a lot for your time. I really appreciate. Regina, Jerry, Anna, Aaron, Luana, and Florian are the people that made it through the path and um, feel free to reach out to them or reach out to me. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the day and the sessions. Thanks a lot. We're gonna to go to the survey. Jerry, we'll have a quick survey now for all of you. Before you leave, please do the survey, Jerry. Is it open? Okay. Thanks a lot, everyone. Right Varun, you please email me your email address. You want the book, right? You want a special price. No job, but just the book. Thanks, everyone.
Take care. Enjoy your day.